Hello, we have another Blender tutorial. This is a great starter for everybody out there just beginning with the 3D modeling inside of Blender. Uh, so we're going to make ourselves a bookshelf and put the material on it and uh, perhaps set it aside for a asset library asset without any further ado. Hey, it's me, I'm over there, I'm tiny. Hey, all right. So you're inside a blender. You have a cube sitting here. So why don't we make use of that cube? First, I like taking my left click and selecting a few of these and hitting the delete key. We don't need any of those, we just need this cube. With that in mind, why don't we just hit one on the keyboard, the, uh, the number pad on the keyboard. That's where it's located. Let's hit S on it and X to scale on the X axis. Uh, we can go whatever width you would like. It depends on the size of the bookshelf you would like to make. I'm going to go something like that. I'm going to hit S and Z, scale on the Z axis. I'm going to make a uh, moderately tall bookshelf. That'll be great. Now I'm going to hold the middle mouse and take a look at it, and I think that's an adequate amount of uh, uh, length, I guess. Uh, the width uh, looks good to me, so I think that's going to be perfectly acceptable. I'm going to hit tab, go into the edit mode, hold control, and press R. Now I'm using the loop cut. Now with this yellow line <laughs> around my uh, stretched out cube here, I'm going to scroll up on the middle mouse click until I have a, the amount of shelves that I would want, because that's what I'm going to turn these into. Um, I think that looks good, perhaps. I'm going to click to accept that. Now I'm left with those three, those new shelves that I created, the, uh, the lines in my <laughs> stretched out cube, if you will. And I'm going to right click to have them exactly even according to the uh, amount of space allotted for the creation. I hit three on the uh, keyboard and now I'm selecting faces. I'm going to click on the, on the front face Therefore, uh, automatically when you click something, it will deselect everything else that you already had selected, unless you are holding shift. You can select multiple uh, faces. Now, while I'm in edit mode and I'm using the middle mouse click to click around and look at my object, I'm going to click all of these and uh, I'm going to hit I to inset. I'm going to hit I again once to make sure they're individual and I want this to be as thin as possible. Now I'm going to use that middle mouse to look around again. I mean, that's constant. I'm just always looking around at my object. I'm going to extrude with the E key and pull this back almost to the, to the, to the brim don't want it this far. I'm going to grab, hit Y on the keyboard, and bring it in just a smidge. Um, you know what? Before I let go, I'm also going to, you know what? Actually, I'm going to let go, and I'm, I'm just going to hold shift. I can also hold control and just press up here, and it will connect all the mesh from my current selection to the selection I was selecting. <laughs> Words. I'm going to hit I. Just to, I'm going to hit I again so it's all one giant selection. And this is just to make sure that these over here, uh, it'll just look a little bit nicer when I create a new material over here. So in the material panel, uh, this is the original material. It looks more like this, probably. 
Uh, by default, I set it as a blue material just because I can, I suppose. Now I'm going to create a new material here and call this one wood. Um, so that's the wood. And then, uh, you know, actually, let's call the second material cardboard. And the first one wood. And because I'm going to be putting this in an asset library, I'm going to have it wood uh, bookshelf. And then cardboard will be the same. Bookshelf. The cardboard is not nearly as specific, but I'm going to assign everything that I currently have selected in this uh, viewport right here is going to be assigned the cardboard shelf. You won't be able to see that right now unless I go over here, change this color, something like blue, just for the demonstration. I'll go change my viewport to view shading. Now you can see that the cardboard is white, the bookshelf is blue, just like in real life. No. So this is about halfway there, right? We want to add the materials to this object and make it look all nice. First off, my advice uh, for this tutorial, you'll need to do this here. Uh, for add-ons, you'll want to look for the Node Wrangler and enable that. Now go to your shading with your item selected. Therefore you'll see the nodes that make up the current material you have selected on this object. So if I select down here, let's say I'm currently working at the cardboard, which is white. <laughs> At right now anyways and I'm now on the wood now we want to add some materials this demonstration I will be grabbing some materials from textures.com uh, you could sign up right now and get a couple of free materials uh, every day uh, let's just look for cardboard Needs to be one word. Cardboard. Searching. Great. We have cardboard. Uh, now the kind of cardboard that is typically on the back of a um, what should we call it? Uh, <laughs> bookshelf. I don't know why I was just spacing that word. I'm going to download all the materials that are required for the cardboard. Uh, let's show in folder. Right, this is what we're working with here. Now I'm going to grab these materials, control X, and I'm going to go to um, an area that I have my materials and textures already all set aside. And we're going to go there, and remember that it's called Cardboard. So now, with this material selected, because I have the Node Wrangler enabled, I'm going to hold Control shift t That will bring up the option to grab all of the materials, uh, the textures that make up the material that I would like to use for this one. Cardboard, so textures.com, uh, cardboard, so birds, so it's getting closer. Um, I, that's one thing I really wish that, um, Blender had enabled is being able to search, uh, just by pressing the letter in the, uh, in the search bar or whatever but you have to be very specific with it okay so I accidentally put it on the wrong one that's okay we'll call this card and this one's going to be wood fine let's select and assign now if I hold uh, control I 
and I inverted my selection that I had and I will now assign this one wood which I already have some wood downloaded but you can find more wood at uh, textures.com and for the wood now that I'm inside of the wood material I will hold control shift T and I will select my wood materials and again they're in here somewhere well, where could it be? Will I find it? You will see. All right. I got my wood material. I selected it. Now, you got to make sure you have your principal material uh, node selected before you hit Control Shift T. Otherwise, this whole thing will not work. Now that I have it sitting here, I'm going to go Smart UV Project, and that's by hitting the U key, and then scrolling down to the Smart UV Project, and let's see if we can do this. Go down here, and I'm going to select everything that is wood. Scale it up, see if that did what I want. That looks pretty darn good. The cardboard looks a little whack. I believe it does. Select the cardboard. Go to UV. A to hit select all. S to scale. We'll make it giant. That's more like it. And now we got some cardboard on our business. That's not a swear. That was a funny way to say business. Now that I'm defending it, it sounds super guilty. Let me say book uh, shelf A. And I'm going to be saving this in a folder called Asset Pack Blender. This is a folder of mine that has fully pre made um, meshes. And when you create your uh, asset pack item, you're going to want to go to external data. I personally like having it automatically pack resources, but you can pack resources here, and that will make sure that all these textures come with your mesh. Now, in order to make this um, accessible in your asset, library you're going to want to right click over here in your current file library and mark as asset control s to save now when you come up here to edit your preferences go to file paths and you'll see down here asset libraries you click this plus to add the folder that has the, the, the um, the asset that you just created, you select it, add asset library. It will pop up down here. You name it right here for this one. It's going to be inside of the asset pack library. I'm going to hit Control S to save. So now when I go in to create, I'm going to, uh, when I create a new scene, I'm going to drag this uh, panel up. Let's go change this panel to Asset Browser, Shift F1. Instead of Current File, I want to go down to the Asset Pack Blender, where I know I just put that bookshelf. There it is. There's the bookshelf. And it has the materials attached to it because we have attached them and packed them with the file that this was currently at. So now you have a bookshelf and you can put it inside of your asset library. Fantastic! You are creating in Blender. I will now uh, I will create some more uh, tutorials. Make sure you check in and uh, watch some more of what I got going on. Um, subscribe, do all that stuff. And keep on watching for more videos. It's been Eric Pauly at erpauly.com. And I will see you next time.